Imagine a world where you have the confidence to face every challenge head on, just like your favorite anime heroes. A world where self-doubt doesn't hold you back, but propels you forward. Sounds impossible? Well, it's not, and I'm here to show you how. I'm Songpi, and I'm a fitness and nutrition coach, and I love helping geeks and gamers become the protagonist of their own life. In this video, I'm going to discuss concepts from Russ Harris's The Confidence Gap. This book was life-changing for me as someone who is naturally a bit pessimistic. I couldn't stand positive affirmations, they just didn't seem to work on me, and a lot of conventional therapy techniques frustrated me more than helped me. I felt like I was often overthinking my way out of self-help books, and this is one that stuck with me. We often think of confidence as a goal in itself, but why do we want to be more confident? We don't want it just for the sake of confidence, right? We want to be confident because we want to feel empowered. We want to be able to live our lives fully. Conventional wisdom says that if we're confident, we'll be able to achieve our goals and break boundaries and do things beyond our wildest dreams. And when we think of confidence, we usually think of people who are self-assured, who never doubt themselves, who are really positive. They are never scared and never feel negative. And this can often lead us to feel like I'll never achieve my dreams until I feel more confident. I think of my clients who tell me things like I'll go to the gym once I lose weight or I'll start streaming once I'm better at playing games. I'll start trying new recipes once I'm better at cooking. This is what Harris refers to as the confidence gap. So how does one get over this gap? This scene from My Hero Academia perfectly demonstrates someone taking action before they have the confidence to do so. His legs just started moving. Another iconic example of this is Simone when he is piloting Logon even though he is not confident and he's working with Kamina to fight the gunmen with all the villagers. Another example of this might be Shinji getting in the Maybe not Shinji. I, I, I think I think Shinji is like opening up. That's opening up a can of worms. Forget that, forget that. I'm on. Comment below any characters that you think do a better job of um, showing this that's not Shinji. <laughs> So what do these anime examples show us? I think for a lot of us, we think that once we're confident, we can do things, but it actually goes the other way around. When we take action, we become more confident. And as we become more confident, we can then take action again. And this is the cycle that actually produces confidence. In order to become more confident, we need to practice what Russ refers to as the confidence cycle. In it, we're going to practice the skill, apply them effectively, assess the results, and then modify as needed. And we continue this process over and over again. And then by taking the action and doing, we become good at the skill and therefore more confident in it. And you may be thinking, but I'm too scared to try zombie. Being scared is normal. It is in our biology to feel scared. And uh, let me explain this. Hundreds of thousands of years ago, when we were cavemen, we basically had only a few priorities. It was sleep, sex, shelter, survival, food, right? Like we had very few priorities, but they all kind of surrounded with just keeping us alive. When there were threats like saber-toothed tigers and just environment and I don't know, environmental stressors, it was beneficial for us to feel fear. By feeling fear, we were able to spike our cortisol level and deal with threats and therefore keep ourselves alive. Because we felt fear, like that's how we got to where we are today, thousands of years later as a species. We've been conditioned by media to think of fear as a bad thing. Whether fear is considered like lack of confidence, low self-esteem, anxiety, insecurity, nerves, these are all things that have such a negative connotation in our society. But what that does is it completely ignores the fact that our brains are wired to feel fear. No one is completely devoid of this. And so many self-help books and self-help gurus will tell you to just ignore those thoughts or work past them 
when like they're so natural. <laughs> and you may have tried so many different self-help methods trying to rewire your brain and gotten frustrated because these thoughts still pop up. So what do we do with them? Well, it's almost impossible to ignore them. So instead you need to learn how to diffuse them. So what is fusion? Fusion is when these negative thoughts, these bad, scary thoughts, take a mind of their own. Negative thoughts aren't inherently problematic, but they become problematic once we allow them to take hold of us. We'll get all caught up in them, we'll believe them, we will take action because of these negative thoughts and they will consume us. And this is what Harris refers to as fusion because we've gotten all tangled up in these thoughts. These negative thoughts may be emotions such as anxiety and fear, memories of past failure, images of things going poorly, thoughts about failure and disaster, when your body starts reacting and you are sweating and have butterflies and just feel nauseous. We're often taught that we should just ignore these thoughts, push them down and you know, move on. I think a character that shows a really good job of what happens when you do this is Mob from Mob Psycho 100. A huge part of Mob's character arc is that he initially would take all of his negative emotions and feelings and completely separate them from his identity to the point where his negative feelings had an identity of their own and he just completely ignored them. But when Mob sees the most growth is when he learns to accept those emotions and learns how to harness them and coexist with them. This is where in learning how to diffuse from our thoughts comes into play. This means allowing there to be separation from our thoughts. So that's just all they are, they're thoughts. I want you to take a second, pause this video and think what is a negative thought that pops up in your mind all the time? Maybe it's something like, no one likes me. And you may think, well, no one does like me. Like, <laughs> How does this work, like if this thing is true? What is so genius about diffusion is it doesn't matter whether these things are true or not. What matters is whether these thoughts are useful. By being able to distance ourselves from our thoughts, we're able to acknowledge them as just that, thoughts, whether they're true or not. And we have the power then to decide, is this helpful? Should this thought guide my actions? Is following this going to lead me to being the person I want to be? By acting on these thoughts, am I going to live the life I want? So how do I actually diffuse my thoughts? How do I distance myself from them? I want you to say out loud the negative thought that has been consuming you and really do your best to believe it. No one likes me. Notice how this makes you feel. Now replay this with this in front instead. I'm having the thought that no one likes me. See how that feels. It's almost like you're able to distance yourself from those words now. And one more time, you can try it with, I'm noticing that I'm having the thought that no one likes me. It feels a lot less personal now, right? Some other exercises you can do that he gives are to sing <laughs> the thought. So like you could use happy birthday like, nobody likes me, <laughs> nobody likes me. And it almost feels silly in a way when you say it like that. And I, that thought that was once so big and overwhelming now feels kind of goofy and it's way easier to separate myself from it. Another way you can do this is to use a silly voice. If the voice in my head that's mean to me sounds like Cartman, it's a lot harder for me to take it seriously. Listen up people. I have anxiety. That means I'm in my shell and have a hard time expressing myself. I find it difficult to engage with others. So everyone shut the f up because my anxiety is up here right now. And yes, these things will take time and will take practice, but you wanna feel confident now, right now. Guess what, you can and I will show you how. I think we often shoot for high self-esteem, but really what we need to shoot for is high self-acceptance. And when we have high self-acceptance, it's way easier to feel confident in ourselves. So how do we accept ourselves? I think step number one is get to know yourself for real. Take the time to journal or even just chat with yourself. Sometimes I'll go up on my phone and just like type into the notes app or talk to my phone. Talk about what you like. What do you not like? 
What do you stand for and what do you stand against? We get so sucked up into our everyday lives that sometimes we don't really consider these things and they can be so beneficial in understanding who we are. And if you've never done this before, it may be hard, right? Like if you've never had those types of conversations with yourself saying, what do I stand for? or What do I stand against? That can be really overwhelming. So start with something simple. What's your favorite color? I love purple. What's something that I don't like eating? I don't like the texture of tomatoes. And you can work your way up into more serious topics. Get real with who you are as a person and what you stand for and what you stand against. From there, I want you to start deciphering your values. Your values are your desired qualities of action. They are what you stand for in life. They are the principles that you stand by. They are the character and qualities that you want to cultivate. Think of values as like your internal compass to guide you in life. If you're struggling to think of what your values are, think of people that you admire in your life. Are they your friends? Maybe they're a creator you look up to, a coach, a mentor, and think about qualities in them that you really admire. And if you can't think of anything off the top of your head, here is a list of values from the book. I want you to pause this video and I want you to go through these values and see which ones you identify with. Which of these values do you go, I highly prioritize that. Which one of them do you kind of prioritize and which of them just don't appeal to you at all? And take the time to pick your top six values. Pause in the video now. Pause, do, do this activity, do it right now. Cool, so you've picked your top six values. I want you to write this down and keep it with you. You'll notice that we often have a gap between what we wrote down on our piece of paper versus how we're living our life. And when we live our life by our values, we feel so in alignment with who we are as a person. I may be failing at work or failing on my weight loss journey or in so many other aspects of my life, but as long as I follow my values and who I am fundamentally as a person, what I believe in, I'm succeeding. Like there's some bit of confidence to be built and living in harmony with who you are as a person and living with the values that you believe in. And I get it, it's not always easy to do these things and it takes practice, but I want you to take a moment and think of someone that you trust. Why is it that you trust them? It's probably because they show up for you and you can trust that they'll be there for you. They do the things that they say they'll do. I want you to start showing up like they do in your own life. Start keeping the promises you make to yourself. Start living in alignment with the values that you have for yourself. People often tell me that they struggle because they don't feel motivated to do things, but I need you to understand that motivation is finite. No one is motivated all the time. So you need to decide whether you're willing Willing to be the person that does stuff even when they don't want to. Life is unpredictable and despite our best efforts, things don't always go the way that we want them to. Sometimes we just don't feel up for stuff. What's important is that we do our best to live in accordance with our own values. If you take anything from this video, I hope it's that action will inform confidence. Stop being stuck in the confidence gap and start living your life regardless of how confident or motivated you feel. Just like our favorite anime characters, we can live courageously, even if we're scared. And as a result, that can help us become more confident. And remember, you don't have to do this alone. I have a free Facebook group full of supportive geeks and gamers just like you, where I share fitness tips and we all support each other on our fitness journeys. I'll leave a link in the description below, so be sure to check it out and join the community. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with anyone that you think it may help. And don't go anywhere just yet, because next up is a video on how to start your fitness journey with advice inspired by Midoriya from My Hero Academia so that you can start taking the actions necessary to begin your fitness journey. See you in the next one. Bye.